talking about bro science, what are your thoughts on NoFap? Um, I think that it is, it depends what you are doing it for. Are you doing it because you've been told by, I don't know, some like incel forum that this is like what you got to do, or are you doing it for a dopamine detox thing? Are you doing it like in what context, just in general, what do I think about it? Yeah. And Uh, what are the contexts in which you think it's got some efficacy and which are the ones that you think is pie in the sky? I think there are a lot of people who Mm -hmm. are sedentary hermits that basically never leave their house and use outlets like pornography to achieve that dopamine hit that is otherwise a lower barrier to entry way of achieving that smashing the dopamine button. It's a lot higher effort to go find a woman, you know, go on a date with her, uh, you know, attract her, get her into your bed, you know, have sexual intercourse and actually put energy expenditure into that activity as well. It's very easy to sit at your computer that you're already at, open up the browser, and uh, smash the dopamine button. So a lot of people just – it's almost like a weirdly paralleled version of those rat studies where they just wired their brains and then give them the opportunity to smash this this dopamine button essentially. And they always choose to smash it over and over again. It's like that is very much paralleled, I think, in a lot of um, men nowadays because it's just such a – ease of access now that there is nothing to dissuade them from doing it and not having the, I don't know, the willpower or the even want to try and avoid it to go seek, you know, a higher quality of life that might otherwise involve companionship or whatever it is. They very much will take the easy route and, you know, it still achieves the same dopamine hit to them. So for them, it's there, there's wired to be you know, for them, I think no fab could be useful because at some point your biological urges will be like, get the fuck out there and have sex. Because you're motivated so much just by frustration. Yeah, like the apathy and the complacency that you have after busting a nut, it's just like you just don't really care about anything. You know? Like why like why am I gonna go find a woman to be with when I'm satisfied and I just feel fine? You know, I'm just chilling here. I don't need to do that. So that's where it would be useful. Was yeah, it, was, I, it, was it not useful? I think it's useful in individuals who it has actually had a detriment to their quality of life from a relationship standpoint, uh, social interaction standpoint. Some people end up hindering their relationship quality with their girlfriend too because they're so porn addicted. They end up, you know, over masturbating and then exposing themselves to stimuli that otherwise makes them relatively unresponsive in an actual real life setting with a woman. Like there are many scenarios in which I think no fap or more specifically no porn potentially coupled with some degree of no fap is worthwhile. I think these get conflated a lot is the no fap, no porn thing. Like a lot of people just say no fap, but in reality, a lot of it is problematic with the compounding effect of the pornography exposure. Cause if you're just, if you're just like thinking about your girlfriend, you bust a nut because you haven't seen her in you know a while. I don't think that's bad necessarily. What else are you going to do? You know? So it's the pornography and like tying that, that, the dopamine hit to that activity that is overly problematic. And then the no fap, if it gets, if it's excessive fapping or it's hindering your drive to go th- do things in life. Pathological that, fapping. Yeah. Yeah. Like th- at that point, when you can actually sit down and objectively look at yourself and say, this is impeding my ability to either get high quality relationships, maintain them in some capacity, or it's not leading to what I feel to be, a high quality of life in general, like at that point, I think NoFap is absolutely worth trying. I think there's definitely a, a lower ceiling for where it's justified to do no porn versus I think NoFap, like not, I, I don't necessarily think NoFap needs to even be in the same conversation as no porn always, which mm-hmm. it often is. People I, just assume I, I, it to be mean. one in the same. Yeah, it's got a branding, no porn's got a branding problem because it's not as catchy. Yeah. No fap's quite catchy. And I don't think, even with porn, I don't think it has zero place. Like, I think there are some scenarios in which, you know, could be great. Maybe it excites your sex life. Who knows? It's just a matter of, like, the exposure, like, too much or too little. Too much of something is always bad in general. So, as you would expect, at some point, you are crossing the threshold into impeding your quality of life in some capacity. I've read about risks online of going too long without coming for men. Mm -hmm. Any truth to that at all? It's, uh... There was this one study I dug into. It was about ejaculation frequency. And there was a pretty clear trend whereby after a week, if you don't 
bust a nut, you will have a big spike in testosterone. And then thereafter, you end up having this plateau effect where it doesn't stay high. It kind of like dips back down and then plateaus at baseline. So I think there's some sort of biological like rhythm to trying to drive you to do something. And then it's almost like with with fasting. If people fast the first few days, you're super hungry. You have these biological urges to go eat and get nutrients. And then your body sort of shifts into like a anti-catabolic, more like sustain, just preserve yourself, hibernation mode. And I think that very much applies to ejaculation and sexual activity too. Like if you go too long without it, your body goes into a state of like seemingly adjusting to no sexual activity to some extent. I am no longer a reproductive being. Yeah, like I am. Maybe I'm <clears throat> ancestrally, I am uh, out on a hunt or I'm lost somewhere or I'm at war mm. or something and I need to just not be too concerned about this. So with that, if that was the case and if this study was to be believed and there's probably other factors and blah, blah, but that would suggest that around about a weekly to uh, fortnightly cadence mm. of either having sex or fapping yeah. would actually be an advantage because I'm going to guess you only get this spike once. It's not like if you weren't to bust a nut again for the remainder of that month, mm. you're not going to get weekly spikes each time. You get one and then it plateaus. So you like could order to keep- repeat the cycle if you ejaculated at one weekend, then you reset the clock every yep. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it's, it, again, like, I don't necessarily, this would be like a wild biohack to try and just recommend, and I don't necessarily, like, <laughs> make sure you only bust once a week. Not saying that. Yeah. It's just, if you were somebody who was to actually follow, like, what happens biologically that seems to be in line with what happens. And a lot of people on that do know FAP, they will also find that it's extremely difficult at the beginning, and then after a while, it's like, oh, it's not that bad anymore. Well, is that maybe something that you actually want to be adapted for? Yeah. Is that actually something that, yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, like, do you want to be in a state of, for example, perpetual fasting where you just don't desire nutrients? Like, maybe if you're a bear who's hibernating, like, I don't know, but... Yeah. Well, um, I was talking to Hamza, who is kind of my window into the younger guy's personal development world, mm-hmm. and he was saying that there's a lot of guys that he knows who have attached their sense of self-worth to the number of days since they last fapped. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said about the feeling like you're working towards something and achieving something and have power over your your urges. Like you have a control over your body because you definitely feel like after you break a no fap streak because you succumb to the urges, you feel like a piece of shit, even though it felt good for a second. Mm. Like, God damn it. I just I just fucked up. And the people who are able to sustain and, you know, work past that, there's very much like a an achievement of, oh, I've gone 27 days without fapping or busting an eye. I'm, you know, this is fantastic. I have, what, what's Jerry Seinfeld say? Or uh, George, it's like power over my domain or something. Or I control my domain. I, for, I forget what they said. But it's uh, definitely something to be said about the, uh, um, I don't know, restraining, definitely giving guys a sense of reward for an achievement of control of self, not giving in to urges. Like the same way you would not give in to, I don't know, craving sugar or something and you feel good about it. I think some guys do would expectedly tie their self-worth to, you know, I don't need sex. I don't go, I can go this long without even mm. feeling like I need, and it, it could sometimes extend into a problematic thing where it's like, I don't even need a woman. Like, fuck, yes. fuck the other gender. Like, I don't, I don't even need to have a companion because I'm like that much of a lone wolf who doesn't need to fap. I don't yeah, need I'm a woman. i mode for the rest of my life. Yeah. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace. <laughs>